So let us tip our glasses and say a toast to world peace. Hi, I'm Jason Oliveira. This is The Road to 40, my nightly vlog where I talk about all kinds of silly stuff. I'm not even going to turn that light on tonight because I'm pretty sure this is going to be a quick one. Didn't even adjust the set. You can see behind the scenes here. <laughs> that was going to go on the Blu-ray, but now just forget it. <laughs> um, I really don't know what to talk about. Uh, I've been driving Carol's car around. That's been fun. Um, it's been interesting. Nice to have heat again. Waiting for the taxes to pour in so I can pay bills. Literally, just so I can just pretty much pay bills. <laughs> and do a few things around the house. I can't wait to do this office. I know this isn't a fun, exciting topic for you guys on the opposite end of this, but I'll probably record it, most likely the whole the whole day of, you know, or whenever I can get a camera rolling or whatever. So, um, any color suggestions? Uh, originally, I was thinking about going lighter. Because I think this is a very, it's a dark green. The walls are like an olive, probably like exactly like an olive looks. Just a little bit more green rather than yellow. Um, and that's what you got for walls in here. But they're not too dark, but they're definitely darker than I would appreciate. We just painted one room in our house turquoise. I'm sure you're so excited to hear me talk about this. But, turquoise. Yeah, turquoise. And I was totally against that color. I hated that color. I've never been a big been a, been a big fan. Never been a big fan. Never never been a big fan. Never been a big fan of turquoise right now. Um But in that room, the way the light comes in part of it's cause there's no curtains on the windows yet too, so that's a big part of the light in there, but What was it what's the idea of adding curtains to a window? Like, is it just decorative? Or, I mean, you can shut them, obviously, but you got blinds to do that now, especially if you get room darkening blinds. So why do we still need curtains? I mean, they look nice, don't get me wrong. I really like the way they look in here. But when I walk into a room that doesn't have curtains, first thing I notice is, A, it doesn't have curtains. B, how sunny it is on a sunny day, of course. Um, if it was really sunny on a gray day, that would be pretty interesting, huh? That's wizard work right there. That's magics and wizards and spells of the Dark Lord of the Sith. Slith. So I went to Rivermont Pizza for the first time today. I didn't eat there. I just went in to meet somebody. Um, and uh, it's a really interesting place. Yikes. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. It smells really good. The pizza smells delightful. I actually need to go in there someday just so I can get lunch or something. Maybe I'll bring them. See, my, my son Grayson is such a picky eater. I'd bring the boys over there for lunch, but he won't eat anything. He'll eat a hot... Well, he hasn't had hot dogs in, like, weeks either. He gave up the sausage because he realized how gross they were. A little disappointing. I like sausage. I know it's gross, but it's so delicious. Although, I will say, one of the few things the vegetarian uh, replace, it's, I can't remember, it's actually the, the store brand, I think. Kroger does a breakfast sausage patty that's pretty damn good and really close. Even the texture's really close to it. Carol just made, um... A vegetarian chili tonight that has carrots and squash and all kinds of stuff in it and I thought that's fucking gross you're nasty and I looked in it when I got home and I smelled it I was like oh it smells pretty damn good so I took a spoonful and I was like oh my god this is really good <laughs> and I took another spoonful and another and another and another <laughs> it reminds me of one of my favorite scenes well not one of my favorite scenes but um, a scene that I like from uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> he's he's got them all in his basement, and he's diagramming everything about what happened and who was where and who saw what and uh, trying to find out who did it, who stole who stole his bike. And it ends, and he's just going, and he keep trying to um, knit uh, this sweater, but oh shit! <laughs> Don't you hate when people do that? They're like, oh, this is a great quote. How does it go? <laughs> And they just keep knitting <laughs> and knitting and knitting and <laughs> that scene in the movie. And that's the end and everybody's like, fuck this. And they get up and they walk out. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that's always stuck with me. I have a recommendation. I haven't listened to him in years, but my best friend, Corey Smith, uh, posted on Facebook today that he was listening to Cub. 
I don't know if you've ever heard of the band Cub. It's just these two girls with acoustics and, well, I think it's a band. I think there are drums and everything like that. Um, but it's really just kind of indie folk type, like that type of feel to the music in a way. But it's, it's pretty good. It's well done. It was, this is, we're going back. Jesus Christ. I can't even count back. Almost 20 years? No. No. 90? Oh my god. 95, 96. Yeah, so that's almost 20 years. That was the last time I listened to them. I don't even know if they're still around. They could be dead. I hope they're not. They were good musicians. They were fun to listen to. Me and my friend Corey used to listen to them in, when we'd drive to Bolton. Bolton and back. That was a long drive, but we had a lot of fun going out there and hanging out with some friends up there. Funny thing is, is uh, those people that we met, I met in the White Mountains in New Hampshire with my friend Jeff Godick. We were just walking around and we started talking to him. And then we like exchanged information like, yeah, we'll hang out sometime. And then we came back here and we actually did communicate and we did hang out. We went to shows together and all kinds of stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, small world. It's such a smaller world. And, oh, stop it, you damn phone. Ah, oh, okay work-related head. I had to send photos. See, I went... Here's the thing. I love where I work. I work at a locally owned bookstore named Gibbons Books in Little Dickens. It's one quarter used books, one quarter new books and children's books, and one quarter toys, one quarter uh, teacher supplies. Now, um... The thing is, I do a lot of things there. I, I, I set up their whole network when we got a new point-of-sale software system, um, which was a real basic setup. I mean, it wasn't like something intricate that we really had to get involved with. I could have probably done a much neater, cleaner job if we had a closet that we could set up to be the network closet and stuff. But um, nonetheless, everything works on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not a miracle. It's not beautiful. It's not pretty. But even for the skill level it took me to set that up, there's, for one of me, there's probably 25 that don't know how to do that. And I forget that sometimes. Now, we're living in a day and age where people have gotten a lot smarter and learned a lot. Well, depends how you look at it. Um, smarter in the sense that, like, we know how to operate technology. Like, it's not crazy to see somebody in their 40s operating a smartphone when if you had handed somebody in their 40s a smartphone, you know, 20 years ago, it was a whole different ballgame. I mean, computers weren't... I mean, you could get computers when I was in, like, 8th grade, which was, like, 88 or 89. Appetite for Destruction. Yeah, 88, 87, something like that. Anywho, um, but they didn't really get worth having at home until probably the mid to late 90s, I'd say. Then, all of a sudden, the, the software that was coming out with it was productive. Like, you could do more on the computer than you could you know, by hand or typing or whatever. So I, I really was on that cusp, man. I come from a generation where we didn't have computers. Like, this is really dating me, but this is the road to 40, so you know how old I'm going to turn. <laughs> but I told you guys about this once. We used to do typesetting in uh, graphic arts, and we used to have to actually mold out of lead the letters that would get rolled onto the paper. Like, I mean, now mind you, BP was a little bit behind the times when it comes to certain things, but that wasn't so old of a technology that they didn't still teach it. That's my point. Computers hadn't taken over the art of fonts. Like, that's how you chose your fonts. Like, people made these things by hand, crazy by hand. These things were worth thousands of dollars probably back then just to get a tray of uppercase, lowercase, uh, you know, all the um, quotation marks. and uh, What's the thing you put at the end? The punctuation. Um, I got it. I got it before my brain did or something like that. Um, and we had this huge cutting machine. There was a cutting machine you had to use both hands because if your hand was there, it's gone. <laughs> and you could stack, I think it was like, I mean, like a good dictionary, double, triple dictionary size, like, and it just fucking cut right through. It was crazy. Um, <coughs> where was I going with all of that? Anywho, I learned skills as the things really were coming into, uh, into power, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, I got my first computer, it was the summer of 93, my aunt got it for me for graduation, 
And I remember putting in the San Diego Zoo CD-ROM and, and seeing pictures and videos come to life on the screen. I'm like, I'm making this all happen. I'm like, what else can I do? And so I, like my father before me, was a Jedi. Um, and we really like technology. So, yeah, so all along the, the way, you know, I mean, the last major technological advancement I made in my life was a computer that I built probably two years ago now. Um, it's handy. It does all the things I need it to do and so much more. Um, but now, you know, as all things do, it, it, it ages. And so now, at least building computers will always be, for at least the next five years maybe, fresh in my head. I'll probably build one more computer at least. After that, I'll probably throw in the towel and just start buying them or whatever. But um, my point being is, is as technology has advanced, I've advanced with it. When Blu-ray came out, when DVD came out, I was the first... No, probably second person I know to have a DVD ROM drive. Not even a writer, just something you could play DVDs in. And I remember I bought a. Me and my friend Brad actually set it up. Uh, video capture card, not a capture card, the reverse, the TV tuner card. We ran out from there, out from my sound card, all the way across my bedroom, up around the door into the living room so that we could play DVDs in the office and watch them out in the living room and that was my love of networking began then <laughs> so all <laughs> so all these things as they came to be um, you know I had a hand in I followed along with it like technology has always been something I've understood in how to make it work for the most part. I mean, I'm no programmer or I'm not, you know, an engineer by any stretch of the imagination, but having cell phones when they pretty much first were becoming readily available, having a beeper for that matter, you know, knowing that I used to buy records, you know, 45s and 78s, is that what it was? Uh, I've seen these generational jumps from like 8-track to you know, record from record to tape, tape to CD, and now to digital. Everything's just digital. It's like there is no, <laughs> you know, substance. I mean, you can still buy CDs, but whatever. Anywho, I'm just making myself feel old at this point, so I'm going to go. <laughs> I just wanted to stop in and say hi and uh, let you know I'll be back tomorrow night with a full-fledged episode. All right. So, if you're loving watching these as much as I'm loving making them, please subscribe, like, and comment, and pass them along to anybody who you know who might like them as well. Follow me on that there social media. Uh, it's always at G-E-Y-C-E-N. Don't forget to make someone smile tomorrow. Do your best to make a stranger smile tomorrow. <laughs> um, make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today, tomorrow. Let's make the world spin a little bit happier together. Let's sing and dance in the sun and the rain, my brothers and my sisters. Live life to the fullest and love every moment of it because you just never know when that last moment's going to come. All right, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. And take care of those around you who can't take care of themselves. They're the ones that need it the most. Poor little fellers. Poor little fellers. French fried potatoes. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm Jason Oliver. Dr. Carl's behind the camera tonight. Yeah, the, the um, tripod broke, so he's holding the camera. Pretty steady, though. Huh? He did a good job. Now I'm going to go kick him in the groin. <laughs> I'll see you guys a little bit further on down the road. To 40. <laughs>